it has been a really long day, but we're here to report that we lost our drone. And by we, I mean Ian lost our drone. <laughs> well, Dara helped me with that. Um, yeah. It was my harebrained idea to stop in this specific place to film the reservoir. But then what happened after that? Well, and you also suggested that I fly the drone with the remaining battery that I had from the last place. Which I said, just do a little tiny flight. You told me to a do. Short little flight. You told me to do this flight of this ruin, and then you said, but there should be enough battery for you to do a reservoir as well. Mm. And so I wanted to fly, skim along the top of the reservoir. And what happened? And it was extremely windy and the drone flew very quickly in one direction and very, very slowly in another. So slowly that it wasn't able to make it back to me before. It ran out of battery, it landed in a field and I didn't know where it was. And because I wasn't hooked up to cell signal, I had no GPS coordinates for where the drone came down. So I was sitting there like I always do, just waiting for Ian to finish flying, and I hear this, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, and I knew something very bad had happened, and then he started tearing off in the direction that he'd flown the drone, and then he came back a while later saying, I, can't, I don't know where the drone is. Yeah, so we spent a lot of time troubleshooting, and, uh, you know, Googling things like how do you find out where your lost drone is when the battery is dead. Yeah. And I mean, he couldn't connect to the drone. He couldn't make it beep to help us find it. And the worst part was normally with DJI Mavics, mm -hmm. you can see your flight path and mm -hmm. know where it ended and then get a coordinate and go look it up. That's what one of the helpful videos we watched during our panic time told us that yeah. he had no flight path because no. he had been flying with his controller not being his phone but being the iPad yeah. that which is not hooked up to internet doesn't have internet connection yeah. so even though your flight paths are saved on the cloud these flight paths were not saved on the cloud yep so, so we, we resorted to visual search Yep, we like methodically, yep, we methodically <laughs> covered an area and went back and forth, back and forth. And of course, acres of open fields. Yeah, we spent an hour, an hour and a half walking looking, back and forth in yeah. fields. And I mean, the fields were full of, I don't know what I do know. At one point I walked too close to a culvert and the field was all marshy. And so my feet just stepped down into like this big mud puddle soup and I was covered in dripping mud, which was a little inconvenient because we were scheduled to go to a big fancy dinner, an expensive fancy dinner at some big Grantly Hall place that Ian had reserved us at months ago. And so he's there in his dress shirt. I'm there <laughs> getting mud splashed all over me. Yeah. So he found the drone. Got the drone, found the drone in acres and acres of field. I can't believe it. I had literally given up. When it came down, I could see a field and long, long grass, but. Yeah, long grass is hard to search in. Mm -hmm. So we're wandering around through this, you know, two foot tall grass, trying to find this little baby insect drone. Yeah. But thank goodness we found it. And now for the help of other people, we're going to tell you three really important things that you should never do because Ian did all three of these things, which is why he lost his drone. Yeah. Thing number one. Never fly the drone in very high wind situations, which is what I was doing. I knew the wind was really strong, uh, more than the drone could really handle, but decided to go for it anyway. Yeah, because it's not just that you might crash your drone in high wind, which is also a risk, but but also your battery depletes so much more quickly when your little baby flying, drone is flying, flying against, against the wind. Yeah. yeah. 
which it was on the way home, it was flying against the wind and it just drained the battery really fast. Right. So thing number two that you should never do is... You should never fly your drone without a full battery. That was the lesson two that I learned from this experience. Yeah, when you start flying, it should be with a full battery so that by the time you're ending your flying session, uh, you have the highest probability of not having a dead battery. Yep. And lesson number three is to fly with uh, your controller attached to the internet so that you are able to track what the drone is doing, where it is. Yeah, so Ian usually uses his phone, but because he brought the iPad on this trip and the iPad has a much larger screen, so he was thinking, oh, hey, I can see a lot more easily, especially in, you know, in under these conditions, I can see exactly where the flight path is, but that's not a good idea because no. when things go wrong, you have no recourse yeah. and you cannot find the coordinates of where your little baby drone has dropped out of the sky. Yeah. So, um, so all's well that ends well. Yes. We've learned right. some painful lessons and we're exhausted from walking around in the muddy field. We did tidy ourselves up enough to have the fancy dinner at Grantley Hall, but it was a very eventful, exhausting day. It was, yeah. So that is our report for tonight. Signing off, thanks for watching and- Do something good in the world today. And don't lose your drone. <laughs>